This is the Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences at Rutgers University in Newark. It's an urban campus. We attract a lot of students from urban areas, and we really make it a mission of this department to help attract these students and help them to thrive in the geosciences. We have nine faculty members, eight TAs, 70 undergraduate majors. We probably have about 25 to 30 graduate students. I attended Rutgers University here in Newark, and now I'm working in the environmental industry as an engineer. The courses I took in the major I was here, it really prepared me for all the field work. We did go out and observe a rock outcrops, um, the writing absolutely prepared me for it. All the reports I write and just being able to understand the natural world. I love it. The geology department is, is so supportive. Um, Dr. Mihaela, she really helps me. Like she's teaching me SEM right now. They really like focus mainly on undergrads and helping them understand like the instruments and the and actually understand geology itself. The department kind of focuses on three specialized areas. We look at pollution of air, water, and soil, okay? And so one of the parts of that is geophysics, and these are environmental geophysics that look at the, just the shallow subsurface using remote methods to be able to see what's underground without having to dig a hole. The next part is to look at chemical pollution. So they're geochemists, they work with uh, air, water, and soil pollution, and and then finally, we have some geobiologists who work with microorganisms and how they deal with the polluted environment. I'm interested in the um, preservation of biosignatures and carbonate rock. So I'm currently looking at stromatolites from both Morocco and locally in New Jersey. The main goal of the research is to see if we can determine if there's uh, a texture of a rock or a chemical signature that may indicate life or uh, biosignature preservation. Mihaela Glamaclea is an assistant professor in this department, and she works on very interesting stuff where they look at extremophiles, things that can live in extreme environments, and right now she is modeling how life began on Mars. Our field areas uh, that we are studying are usually used uh, as terrestrial analogs to other planetary bodies. So the most frequently we are looking at systems on Earth that resemble in some way systems on Mars. And we want to provide uh, space missions with technological and scientific uh, framework within which they can do research on other planets and specifically detect life on other planets. Dr. Adam Kuska is in oceanography, geobiology. So he looks at big, bigger scale pictures, global scale of microorganisms and how they are impacting with global climate change. So I work on marine phytoplankton. Marine phytoplankton are very important for fixing carbon dioxide. They fix about half of the carbon dioxide on an annual basis with land plants doing the other half. It seems that marine phytoplankton are iron limited in vast regions of the ocean. Our lab strives to understand how different marine phytoplankton or marine algae compete with one another for iron. One recent development in our lab, which stems from a collaboration with our colleagues at the Craig Benner Institute in California, we unraveled a novel mechanism of iron uptake in algae that seems to resemble the uptake pathway in human blood cells. We had a really exciting addition to the department just recently, and what we did was we obtained the Meadowlands Environmental Research Institute, and this is a, a field research lab that sits out in the middle of the Hackensack Meadowlands, overlooks New York City, you see the New York City skyline in the distance, and yet the area looks pristine around it. Now it isn't, it's highly polluted underneath, but on the surface it looks like a beautiful place to go. Here we create the professional and the scientist who is going to be working in the front line of the pollution and mitigating this pollution and understanding the challenges and figuring a way around you know, global warming and sea level rise in these low-lying areas. A lot of the contamination is below ground, 30, 40 feet sometimes. In order for us to get down and understand what's going on and how much of the contaminant is down there, we have this drilling machine. So we can make holes up to 100 feet down 
and we can take samples or monitor, you know, what's going on with this, the, the, the water and the soil interface down there. That's why this is so important to have access to, you know, deep into the soil. At Rutgers Newark, um, this area, there's a lot of opportunities for um, using these geophysical techniques to address critical environmental problems. Um, for example, in these wetland systems I've been working on, I've worked in very pristine systems um, in uh, Maine, which are very different from what you see here, where we focus more on understanding the um, hydrology of these systems and also the release of methane gases to the atmosphere. Um, and we've made pretty profound discoveries using these geophysical techniques. The biggest challenges that the world is going to face over the next couple of decades are going to be in the environment. Whether it's climate change or pollution or global changes, and we want to be at cutting edge in that. Not only do we want the research to be able to, to predict what's going to happen and try to remediate things before they become really disasters, but we also want to make a very strong, educated workforce that can really address these issues. Thank you.